Hey everyone, welcome back. We hope you've enjoyed the videos that we've shared so far. We've got one more video to share with you, and I think this is my favorite of the, of the bunch. I'm joined again by my colleague Bob Warden, and this time we've got Principal Horn Rick Britch here, and we've got some things to show you that are, are fun, interesting, and kind of unique. They're all related to brass instruments. They're things you may have seen or encountered and not really realized that they're kind of like brass instruments. Now, when we do this in our live show in schools, we call this our brass player's bag of tricks. And I'm gonna hand it over to, to Mr. Ward and let's see what you got in that bag there, Bob. And here's the bag. And here's the first instrument that I have here. Might surprise you that this is related to a brass instrument but it's an air horn, a signal horn, as you can see. And better plug your ears. Oh boy. Well, that was really loud in here. I don't know if it was that loud on your computer, but anyway, you might wonder, why do I have this at a brass instrument show? And this, this little device uh, illustrates the way a brass instrument really works um, because in this can is compressed air. And when I push this button on the top, it releases air, the air from the can in through this chamber. And inside there, there are two plastic filaments that are close together. And when the air passes through them, they vibrate or they make a buzzing sound. And then the buzzing sound continues out the bell. And of course, the bell makes it louder. So we have air, the buzz inside here, and the bell. And what I like to do is to, uh, to help you remember is instead of knowing, you know, your ABCs, but for brass playing, we call it the ABBs, air, buzz, and bell. So try to remember that, and I'll show you some more stuff. Uh, the next thing here is an old air horn. This is the old guy that Henry Ford put on the Model T car. And again, we have a, a, a rubber ball here that when I squeeze it, it pushes air into a little area here where there are two brass filaments real close together. And when the air passes through, they vibrate or make a buzzing sound. The vibration travels down the tube and then out the bell. And of course, again, the bell makes it louder. And uh, just so you know, Henry Ford, when he had to invent a, a horn for the horseless carriage, the first cars, he got his inspiration from the French horn. And yeah, uh, Rick and, and Eric can show you theirs and look at the shape. It's just like a French horn. All right. Now, uh, in the modern day car horns, they work by electricity, but it's still a horn very similar to a conch shell. It has a, a small chamber in here that creates a vibration. And then there's some compressed air that pushes the, the air through like a, a circular pattern and it comes out the bell. And if you look on the steering wheel of your parents' car, you might see a picture of a little trumpet or a bugle or any kind of a horn, uh, and that's where you push on the steering wheel to make the horn sound. So look out for that. Uh, the next thing I have is something that I picked up at the Grand Rapids Griffins game, and look at that. Look at that. It's a, called a Vuvuzela. They used them at the soccer tournaments, and um, all it is is a plastic tube. It's a hollow tube. I don't know if you can see me through there. Um, but uh, so the air um, and the buzz uh, needs to be produced by me. So I'm using my lungs, taking a breath and blowing through my lips, buzzing my lips and it blow into the mouthpiece and it comes out the bell. And this nice. one real quick can show you, it, I can lengthen it and shorten it and I can play it like a trombone. Yeah. So that's the Vuvuz Vela. And then the last thing I have today are a couple of uh, trumpet horns off of a semi truck. And so they sit up on the uh, roof of a semi way up there. And maybe you'll see them when you tra travel down the highway. And if you go like this, sometimes the truck drivers will honk their horns. But I just wanted to demonstrate, uh, I will produce the air and the buzz myself. This is a longer one. So do you think this is going to be higher or lower than this one, than the short one? Let's see. So there you go. The short one is higher, the long one is lower. And re remember that we I had the buzz and are the air, the buzz, and the bell. So the ABBs of brass playing. All right. 
They can Bravo, Bob. build a brass instrument. Yeah. So now we're going to do something really cool. This is my favorite part of the show when we do this in schools. Um, with the help of Mr. Britch, we're going to build our own brass instrument out of some materials that you might have in your house, in your basement, or your garage. Or you can get them at the hardware store. And check that out. Mr. Britch, what do you got in your hands there? Hose. Look at that. He's got a plastic hose or a tube. Now, you'll recall from our introductory video that all of our brass instruments are just hollow tubes of metal. And if we use the ABBs and we apply those to this hollow tube of plastic, we use those ABBs like Mr. Ward just taught us, we should be able to make a brass instrument out of that plastic tube. Now, we do need one piece of specialized equipment. Remember that little thing we hold up to our lips called the mouthpiece? Mr. Bridge has his right there. We do need that for this. And so I'm going to have him plug that mouthpiece into the end of his tube, and he's going to blow through it, and we should have some sound. Let's hear that. Oh, no sound. Oh, what? So ABB. So we have air, but we need sound. Sound is a vibration. That first B is the buzz. So we have air. Now we need the buzz. So let's buzz our lips first. In the mouthpiece. Now the holes. Ah, that's pretty good. So we have air and the buzz. Now we need it to be a little bit louder. We need that second B, that third letter, the bell. Do we have something there that can work as a bell, Mr. Bridge? Hey, check that out. It's a funnel from the hardware store. Or it's the Tin Man's hat from the Wizard of Oz, right? <laughs> Let's put that onto the end of our hose. And then we'll have an honest hosephone. <laughs> yeah, pretty cool. Now, Mr. Bridge, do you think you could play a song on that thing? I know it's kind of kind of a basic instrument, but maybe maybe there's something from a movie, maybe there's a theme people might recognize. Let's see what that might sound like on, on a hosephone. <laughs> My favorite movie themes played on a hose phone. Nice job, Mr. Bridge. Now, that right there is what we can make in our basements with about five, seven dollars and some tape and we put it together ourselves. The last thing we want to share with you in our video today is something really kind of cool. Engineers and scientists have taken the exact measurements and specifications of a trombone. They put it into a computer modeling program and they can now build an entire trombone just out of plastic. That whole instrument that Mr. Ward is holding is made out of plastic. It's called a P-bone, P standing for plastic. And let's have him talk about it, and then he's going to send, it out, send us out of this video with a little tune. Yeah. All right. Well, like Mr. Peterson said, it's all plastic. Even the mouthpiece is plastic. So let's see how close it comes to a real trombone. Yeah. <laughs> Awesome. <laughs> Great job, Mr. Ward. All right, everybody. Well, thanks for joining us. We hope you've enjoyed this series of videos through the brass section. We really appreciate you watching, and we can't wait to see you sometime soon at a Grand Rapids Symphony concert in the future. Until then, bye for now. Bye. <laughs>